call up uh and i'm sure you maybe have them in your own circles maybe folk that you know talk about you know i'm not voting or democrats and republicans are the same you know do you engage with them i try to uh one of those people was my granddaughter mm-hmm. when she turned 18 um i talked with her about voting i made sure she got signed up to vote but she decided she wasn't going to vote in the last election, her first election. Wow. And it was because she was disappointed with who was running. But she really didn't have a lot of the facts in regards to who was running. So we talked about that, but she still made the decision not to vote. Ooh. And I really hope the Democratic Party aligns themselves more with young people wow. who are new voters. Because, yeah, that's how, how, did, how, did, how do you feel like, you know, um, I have, I have a, a couple of relatives that. Um, and I want to not like I want to. Be mad at them, you know, like I want to not even, you know, have, you know, see them during holidays. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm that's your granddaughter. <laughs> it's like you yeah. can't disown her. So, yeah. uh, so were you were you gentle? I imagine because you sound like a gentle spirit. Um, how did how did you discuss this after she told you she didn't vote? And Arizona was one of those states, uh, like it was that close. Yeah, I I had to respect her decision, but I also thought it was um, my duty to inform her, and you know, arming her with. Um, information that would hopefully make her change her mind. Um, I tried to do that, but I think she was still not not getting it, really. And, and her so, reason? Did she give you a good reason? She just didn't like the candidates who were running, but she was she was very misinformed about some of them. Mm. Yeah, I, I you know... <clears throat> Linda, and I thank you because what you're telling me is what I actually know. Uh, It's one of the reasons why I stay in the classroom to stay close, uh, keep my finger on the pulse of what young people are doing. I I, I saw the trend, you know, of of how they were moving on the heels of Occupy Wall Street. And when that, you know, fell apart, you know, there was uh, about a five year apathetic space. Uh, Then you had the Parkland situation and that revived and Greta Thunberg and that revived some, you know, some energy. We're in a space where we have equal parts. You know, um, I listened, I was listening to Laurie and she was like, yeah, them children aren't going to save us. I, but I do think there's more young people who are um, engaged, but just as many that are not, and just as many that are hateful, you know? So it's like, it's like, we got, equal parts of all of things happening at the same time. I think they're smarter than they've ever been. They're dumber than they've ever been. They're more hateful than they've ever been. They're more loving than they've ever been. I feel like, like the, that generation, the, the, the the 25 and unders are everything hyper, you know, to the nth degree. And you don't know what you're going to get. I had to challenge a kid today, first day of class. I was like, can you let class start before you come in with the, you don't even know what we're going to do this semester. You already, you know, I was like, what, you know, <laughs> I was, but then I was like, oh my God, like, how do I, because what used to work 10 years ago, I could scare them, <laughs> literally scare them into submission. I can't even do that anymore. They, they, they look at that as hostility and it is hostile. It is hostile the world is hostile i'm gonna give you all of that and it's wild so i gotta like change my whole way of being i gotta be all nice and stuff which doesn't play well so um i don't know how much longer i'm gonna be teaching but yeah it's it's a different world out here and i don't really know what to do with it or about it but i know it's y'all's fault y'all raising these children (laughs) it's all y'all raising children it's your fault 
because you want to be friends with these kids. I don't know. Golly. Woo. And 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 they're not moving because they're you can't convince them either. It's not like you back in the day where you could like make a kid do something. You can't make them do anything. It is. I don't know how it's going to end. And then there's some that are just amazing. You know, it's everything. 866-801-8255 is the number. Belinda, thank you for staying vigilant and um, please keep in touch with us. I appreciate you holding on to in Arizona. Let's take Roxy really quickly and then we got to take a break. Uh, Roxy in Texas. Hey. Yeah. Hey, Hi, hey. Karen. How are you? First I am time awesome. Caller. First time. Yeah, love the platform. I just want to kind of double down on what you're saying about voting. I'm actually um, a community organizer, and I like to say, I've coined the phrase, we don't have to convince people that we educate. A lot of these younger kids, and even I met some folks in their 60s and 70s that uh, the 2020 election was the first time they voted. So I would suggest that everybody find out who your people are in your state locally, get involved on a local level, pick a board of commission, become a photo registrar. Once we get involved on that micro level locally and you educate people about the fact that they can elect judges that may be locking their cousins up and that kind of thing, you typically get a little more buy-in from the community and they're a little more enthusiastic about being a part of the process when they understand it's a process. It's yeah. not just going to the ballot box and that's it. Like, we have to be involved on a local level if we're going to make any change. And that's all I wanted to say. Thank you so much for hearing me out. And I love your show. Oh, thank you. You said everything. Uh, we're not going to win these kids and these young people, these older people, these these people, by just telling them, vote is because people died. So that's not going to, no one, they're not, they don't care. They don't care that people died. They don't. That's not a good argument. You're not going to get a you're not going to get people to vote by telling them that the other side is, is you know, wants to kill them, even though that may be true. <laughs> they're, they're not moved by that. To Roxy's point, and I think it's, it's poignant, we're going to have to figure out the messaging that makes it personal for them to vote, as opposed to I feel like a lot of us voted in 2020 against Trump. We just were like, this can't happen. Whoever's there is going to get the vote. And, and Biden was inconsequential. Biden is not inconsequential this time because he's actually president, which is why I think it's going to be even more difficult for him to get reelected. Um, and I think a lot of people are going to sit this one out. And that's scary because, you know, who's not sitting out? The hateful people. And that can't be the message, though. Just because the hateful people are going to vote doesn't mean I should. And you've heard already today people who are on the fence about voting don't want to vote. Don't see why they should vote. And these are the people that have called up. The silent folk are the ones you really have to be concerned with. But I think the Democrat is not our, our job. And I feel like I shouldn't have to even do this. This should be the job. Y'all should have around the clock memes and things. And, and, and don't send me to your website as some people would you go to our website or to our social media page. No, y'all asses need to be out in the streets talking to people and telling them what you're doing for them. Because you've been doing stuff. We just tweeted out uh, four things off of the White House website that included medicine, um, gun control, um, student loan forgiveness, and a bunch of other things that this administration has done. But these should be on little, you know, bite-sized cards that get handed out, talked about all the time. Don't wait until freaking, you know, the summer, uh, next summer, to, to come out with this. It's going to be too late. And it is almost too late. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I run my fingers through her hair. And she smiles and says that she loves me. Isn't it lovely when the one you lost thing is the one